So could the men's team learn a thing or two from the Lionesses? Sports journalist Natasha Henry thinks so, and she joins us now from central London. Uh, good to talk to you. Uh, so what can Roy Hodgson and Gareth Southgate learn from the success of the ladies? I think the key thing they can learn is that it's all well and good having a squad of 23 players, but sometimes it helps if those 23 players are friends or they actually get on as people. I think one of the key differences is that the women have been together since the end of May, so they've had time to, to make bonds, they've had time to ignore their club allegiances and actually get to know the people they're playing with outside of the pitch. Would it be controversial to suggest that they're also operating with perhaps smaller egos? I think... You know, if someone earns more money, you're going to presume that they have a bigger, bigger ego than someone that does someone else that does the same job but earns less money. I don't know enough of the men's players personally that well to say if their egos are big or not. But I do think the pressure or the lack of pressure the women's team have in terms of financially, they don't need to worry about losing sponsorships or, or not getting a new contract because they don't have that security to begin with. So without those pressures, it does allow them to express themselves a bit more, I do think. Also, their behaviour out in Canada, as you say, they've been out there for a decent period of time. They've been playing together a long time. Uh, and what, what has been said about them by their manager, Mark Sampson, is that they're good tourists. Uh, they've used their downtime to, to go and sightsee. Uh, we haven't heard anything of the Habs, the husbands and boyfriends. Uh, when the uh, England men's team go abroad, there's a lot of attention focused on the, on the women and the girlfriends. There's a lot of attention focused on the nightlife, isn't there? There doesn't seem to be a great deal of that surrounding the women's team. They seem to be just knuckling on with the job. I wouldn't say that the men and their, their partners attract that attention. We as media are the ones that follow them out there and sit in restaurants and say what they're eating and what they're drinking and doing. Maybe the fact that there isn't that level of media scrutiny has allowed the women to go out, take selfies, be tourists, but more importantly, be friends with each other and build a relationship that isn't just about teammates. Mm. Is, the, is the women's play more honest? A lot has been made of some of the male players uh, diving and rolling and, and, and really seeming to be a lot, a lot worse injured than they actually are. Uh, some, of, some, of, some commentators have looked at the women's game and say that they do, do seem to play a more honest game. What would you say to that? I'd say they do play a different game. I think part of it is maybe we should stop comparing them. If you had a contract that was bringing you or your club in a million pounds a year, then obviously you have different things to consider when you're on the pitch. And maybe the lack of pressure, financial um, or club-wise, means the ladies don't have to, to look for a, another way to find an advantage for their team other than winning the game. I'm sure it's a problem the ladies would like to have, though, wouldn't it? The, these top female players, they can earn up to £65,000 a year. That's compared to people like Wayne Rooney, who are earning £10 million. Uh, And in terms of a bonus, if they win this, uh, they could, if they win the World Cup, these women each will w win a £35,000 bonus. If the men had won the World Cup, they would have got £350,000. Uh, is it fair, do you think, that the salaries are so widely different? I think this... This becomes a big, oh, the men earn so much, they should be better. It's really a moot point, isn't it? Because it's not them who decides what they earn, it's the industry. We could sit here and say doctors should earn more, which they should. You can only do the best of your ability and you should do that regardless of what you earn. So I think it's very easy to use the women as a brush to beat the men with or a stick to beat the men with. But at the same point, we should also just appreciate how amazing they've done to even get to the semi-finals. Indeed, Natasha Henry. Uh, hopefully we'll be talking about their success at the same time tomorrow. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.